So we'll touch on that that you mentioned that Myra Hindley, who's one of the biggest involved yeah, yeah. one of the biggest child killings and was it five kids? It was five children over a course of Her and, uh, is it Brady? He and Brady, he and Brady. Yeah. Yeah. Moore, the Moore's murder. So how did that relationship come about then between you and Myra? Um well because I I'd I'd been awarded for my work with prisoners, violent prisoners and their families. It was nothing to do with sex offenders. I'd had this award called the Butler Trust Award, where they give you a badge and you go up to Edinburgh and Holyrood Palace and shake hands with the great and good and, and off you go. And part of that award was to, they said, what would you like to research? You can do a piece of research, what would you like to do? And I said, I'd like to research women in prison and as to why they don't get therapy and counselling. So, OK, fine. So the, the prison department paid me to go off and visit 12 female prisons and chat to them, present the research and look at whether there could be a grandum for women, which there's never totally been. There was something started at Winchester years back. Women don't get the same. And I ended up at Cook and Wood. So on the way down there, I knew that Myra Hindley was there. Um, didn't think I'd get to meet her because I already knew that she was kept separately. She was in the hospital unit. I'd, I was going to ask the question, but didn't think I would. And I went round the rest of the community, met all the women, had a chat, had some lunch, and then the governor said, there's somebody who would like to see you up in the hospital, and it's Myra. And I said, OK, fine, I'll, I'll come up there to sit and have a chat with her. And we sat in the kitchen, told her everything I'd told everybody else about where I was from, about Grendon. Um, it was a it was a weird feeling because I, I I'm one of these that knew about the Moors murders, but I didn't know the ab absolute details. But I knew it was bad enough. I knew what I was, was the details? Meeting. Oh, where do you want me to start? It was the fact that they just basically she and Brady had taken innocent children, f virtually for pleasure, killed them and buried them on the Moors. Um, and she's a woman. Bearing in mind, and I'd I'd you know I'd long since. Uh, been working with men and not with women offenders. I don't know what sort of woman I was going to meet. But what I'd got was what everybody else was, that she's done her time and that's it. She's probably going to stay there forever. Uh, but I was I was happy to meet her because I'd met other women that, that had uh, been involved in child, uh, child killings as well. Uh, the other woman that was there is, who's dead now as well is Carol Hansen, who was involved with her husband um, with child killings, and Carol was there. So... Meeting Myra was no no different. I went and sat with her in the kitchen. Um, but the powerful, powerful thing about that, and it's appeared in, in the book I did, uh, which is called For the Love of Myra. I don't have a copy at the moment. But the kitchen was no bigger than about three foot by about six. So you're sat where you are now. I would have been sat closer so that our knees were touching. Yeah, that was quite powerful but that was the only place we could meet. So, and I did say at the time, I said, you know, we're sat a bit close. You'll be on my knee, knee before we know it. She said, oh, chance would be a fine thing. So she said, sense of humour was there. But we had a laughing joke. <laughs> we talked about, we talked about Grendon. We talked about her journey. And she said, well, to me, it's just about to be decided, my journey. I said, what do you mean? She said, I'm just about to find out whether I'm going to be in prison for the rest of my life or whether somebody is going to give me the chance for a bit of release. Um, what do you want? What do you want? I said, she said, what do you think? I'd like to be released. Whether I deserve it in the eyes of the public is different. Um, she never asked me whether I thought she deserved it at that point. Um, I don't think I'd have had an answer at that point because not not for me to judge and that was it so she said interesting interesting i'd like to hear more i said well i might be coming back i don't know the governor's got ideas for me to come and do a bit of work here and that was it then i went back and i was in um grendon i think it was about two or three weeks later and uh, the governor called me to his office and he said there's someone on the phone who would like to speak to you um a governor tim newell and it was the governor at Grendon, who they got, they know each other well, Chris Ellis, who said, um, it's not me that wants to speak to you, there's someone else. And they put Myra on. And Myra said, um, you know, I was really interested in meeting you. I was really interested in what you had to say and the way that you were presenting yourself. And I, I need help. I need some counselling and support. Um, would you be in agreement to come down and, and do that? 
if it could be arranged. And uh, I sort of said, yeah, I'm, I'm happy enough to do that, but I don't quite know how it's going to work. And she said, well, I think the governors are going to talk about it with you anyway, but I just wanted you to say that, wanted to say that I was impressed by what I heard and I think you would be able to get me through this next difficult period. And I said, well, in that case, fine, I'll, I'll do what I can. And that was it. Conversation over. Then I was left with a dilemma because I couldn't carry on... Uh, I was working at Grendon as a uniformed officer. I couldn't be given time during my work time to travel 110, 150 miles down to Kent and 150, 110 miles back. Um, I had to do it on my time off, my weekends. And the governor had agreed that if I was going to do that, it would have to be in my time off. He would sanction it and get the home office, home office to sanction me going down there. He said I would welcome it, Joe. Um, so everything I, was above board. Huh? Everything was above everything board was then. Above board. So your what was your job then to get my, information my to understand who she was, what yeah, she done? Yeah, I mean basically, I didn't know what my job was going to be. I mean, she said to counsel me, but actually, it was more to do with providing emotional support, psychological support. Um, clearly, there have been conversations, and to this day, I don't know what conversations about me between the governor and. Cook and Wood and, and Tim, who doesn't live far away from here, by the way, uh, who was the governor in Grendon. And I was never a party to anything that was said in between. Tim did say he would get, he would have to seek permission from the Home Office, so would I, which was given. Chris had already agreed, the governor in Cookham, she would accept me. Um, so, yeah, it was all set up, but it was, it was... If you think about the things I've just said to you, and there was more to it than that, I was just a uniformed prison officer. I got no rank. I was qualified as a, a counsellor at diploma level, and I got an online psychology degree, which wasn't worth shite. Um, but I was doing the work, I thought, fairly well with prisoners, so maybe that was my qualification. But I was a prison officer in uniform, going down in civvies into a female establishment in Kent, and working with female prisoners. So what was it like once you started working with her? It was it was fine because I took her the same way as I'd taken everywhere else, everybody else. We did agree. We agreed right from the off. I said, right, here's the deal. Here, here's the compact, if you like, to call it that. If you're going to talk to me, first of all, I'm going to want honesty. This goes without saying. If you're going to talk to me, it's no good if you're going to not be honest with me. If you're going to talk to me... It can't be confidential, right? And she questioned that. What, what do you mean? What, what, what do you mean it can't be confidential? In terms of, if you're talking to me, you're supported by another four or five people, I'll be part of that and I will share it with significant others in your life. That's the way I've worked with every prisoner I've come across. That if they've got a mum or a dad or a brother or a sister who are interested in them and they're going to tell me one thing and them another and set up for failure... That's not going to happen. Did she have visitors? Yeah, yeah. She had a, a, a partner at the time because she was in a lesbian relationship. A partner was visiting uh, regularly at that time and she had um, visits from David Astor who was the uh, uh, main supporter financially and, of course, occasionally from Lord Longford and from Peter Timms who was ex-prison governor, Reverend Peter Timms. Was Timm. she ever still speaking to Ian Brady? No, she stopped speaking to Ian Brady way back. Uh, and the last, I don't even know when the last contact with him was, I can't remember now. But Brady wasn't on the scene at all. There was no communication with him whatsoever. Um, most of what she learned, she learned through the media, uh, you know, what was happening with him. So point being, what I she told me was never going to be absolutely confidential. And I said, if you carry on and you work through your bits and you're honest about it and you find wherever you want to be, then that's fine. I can, I can support all of that. And I did. So, but we only had somewhere in the region of 10 or 12 what could loosely be called counselling sessions. And I mean loosely because they were interrupted. Um, we were in the governor's office, so there was phone, phones going. There was noise outside. Twice we, we had a chat in the hospital unit. Um, but it was all done wherever we could meet. And then it, then what happened was the papers kicked off. They all went ballistic. Um, I you were was on the front page of the sun? I was exposed. 
yeah yeah, yeah. Um, as soon as that happened I basically I thought that's it game over um, somebody I was working with Myra in the prison with the governors with other key staff with Myra's personal officer producing reports for the parole board and somebody and to this day we don't know who it was took took my report and sold it to the Sun newspaper and in front of the sun, it says Myra Freedom Scandal. She's yeah. groomed for release. Yeah. So you were getting the blame for trying to help her to get her release. Clever headline, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's that, that paper page. sold out. I struggled to get a copy of that because when I, I went, because the governor called me and uh, Saturday morning it was quite early and said, Joe, are you sitting down? And I said, why should I be? And she said, um, the shit's hit the fan, was her words. And I said, what do you mean? And she said, you need to get a copy of the Sun newspaper. It's all gone pear-shaped. Um, somebody's given you a report. They've got it out there. Uh, you need to see the headline. Um, and I said, oh, OK. She said, just go off and have a read of the report and then give me a call later. Myra sends her regards, her love, um, and, and hopes that Wendy and Sophie are going to be OK um, through it, which was a nice touch. But uh, I went down to get the paper. I couldn't get one. I uh, went to the garage, went into town and struggled to get one. I don't even know where I got that copy from. So I, I went through a couple of hours of <laughs> what's been fucking written. And then I got it uh, and I read it and thought, what? You know, she's going nowhere. Uh, but that's what they p produced. And, Who and do you think sold the story? Who do I think? Yeah. I don't know. Could it have been her? No. She'd never have done that. No. Never. Could it have been a partner? No. The people that were close to her in a in a inner circle because she had a very tight inner circle none of them none of them would have done that um but you don't, don't know because back in the day you're talking what 16 17 years ago this was How, what's it, the yeah, day? yeah you're talking like 50 yeah. grand 100 grand for a front page story i don't think anybody that knew david astor would be short of 50 grand if they if they really wanted 50 grand mm -hmm. Um, okay, I did get it, but anyway, I was paid. My salary was paid, but most of the people that supported Myra were not in there for money. The, the close circle, however, I don't know whether uh, orderly officer, the, you know, anybody in there that had keys to the, the gate officer. Did she ever talk anybody? about like the murders and stuff? Did she ever open up about everything that yeah, she had done? Yeah, yeah. And what was that I like? Mean, first in a lot hearing of, that. Um. It it was tough. It was tough because basically um, she'd not opened up at all much during her sentence as much as I was pushing her to open up. So it was tough for her because I wasn't going to leave any stone unturned. Um, she wanted me to challenge, so I was going to challenge certain things. But it was tough for me to hear as well because just by coincidence, and again it's it's mentioned in the book, I sort of hit the killing of Leslie and Downey coming up to the Christmas period when everybody's getting ready for Christmas festivities and everybody's getting excited about Christmas with their children. I'm sat talking to Myra in the governor's office about Leslie's killing, about Leslie's murder. Um, and it was bloody difficult to sit there and to sit through that. Um, we did something in the beginning, as a, just as a by the by, where initially the first two sessions we talked with the light out. Why? Well, uh, she she said, I, I want to speak, but I want to speak with the light out. And I said, why would you want to do that? She said, because at this moment in time, um, the fluorescent light hurts my eyes, but also I want to be able to talk without you reading what's happening on my face. And I said, why would you want to do that? Anyway, I said, OK, so we'll do it. It was getting dusk, so we we spoke in the darkness, but not complete darkness, you know. And uh, I said to her afterwards, it was a couple of months after, I said, what, what was all that about? Why why would we really have to do, go through that fast just for a couple of interviews? And she said, I just, it's something I wanted to do. Um, I didn't want to see your reaction. I said, what sort of reaction were you expecting you were going to see? Shock, horror, disgust, whatever, whatever you want, you want to look at it. Did she have an attraction for you? I said, do you, no. Well, attraction in terms of... Did she like you? She liked me yeah. as a friend. She called me a rock in one letter and she was always pleased to see me. Um, but she, um, 
she said that in those first two sessions, and we hadn't got into anything heavy, she said, but I was going to mention the fact that I'd, 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 you know, I was party to killing these children and what I'd done, certainly with, with um, Keith Bennett, um, in a part in that. And, and the most important one to her was Pauline Reed was the first one because she told everybody that Brady had basically instigated the lot and that he was the one who'd chosen her for the killing when it wasn't, it was her. But what she'd done it for was mainly because she wanted to just speak and then my reaction was judged by the way I'd reacted subsequently. And I said, what do you see in my eyes now? You know, what do you really expect? She said, what, what, what have you seen since you've told me this? And now we've gone through Leslie Ann Downey's kill it, kill it. Leslie Ann Downey's killing, which, by the way, when I finished, I'd then got to get in my car and drive all the way back home. Uh, and that was sometimes very difficult. At Grendon, I had therapy meetings followed by staff feedback uh, and s an element of supervision. With Myra, I had what she'd given me, driving, thinking about it, and then I'd wait until I got back to work maybe three or four days later because, before I could speak to Dr Jack Wright, who was a psychiatrist at Grendon, and offload. Mm -hmm. So I carried it. And I do remember that, that night of when we went through Leslie Ann's um, murder, driving back, and it was cold, it was winter, um, and driving back up the motorway, I was looking into the distance, my mind was on the moors. Uh, it was awful. I was thinking of kids getting ready and families getting ready and, and not having your child on a Christmas day. How long did their killing spree last over? It went over a period of four years. So for, well, six, finished in 66, so it started in 62, 63, I think. And that was five killings from so, ages of 17 to six years old yeah. or eight years old. And there was like gaps that. before them, you see, gaps been between Could each, there have been more? So. Could there have been more? Yeah. I think... I think they could. I mean, because it was it ended the way it did. I mean, it ended because Brady effectively lost the plot. He he stopped being careful, and the Edward Ed, Edward Evans killing was a mess, an absolute mess. What happened? Well, he got Edward Evans to uh, come back to the house. He'd met him out in Manchester. There was rumours that around that Edward had been, you know, was gay, and they'd been, and that Brady had been frequenting the gay places. Um, and that, that he himself was gay. Um, but effectively, they, he'd brought Edward Evans back to the house, ostensibly for a, a game of cards, and then bludgeoned him with a, an axe. But before he did it, he'd actually got Myra's brother-in-law, David Smith, to come over um, and witness what he was doing. Uh, Myra's part in all of this, because she said she wasn't around at the time, she was in the kitchen and stuff like that. Um, How true is that, though? That how she, true? Yeah, was it true, or is she also a liar? Though? She she stuck she stuck to me with the fact that she would not, she was nothing at all to do with that. She knew what was going on. She could Christ, it was she could have heard it, you know. And well, she did. She admitted to hearing what was going on. Mm. But as far as they were concerned, and then entering at a point when it was it was too late. Um, and da but David Smith was traumatized by. It. I mean, you can imagine, can't you? So the, what I'm saying is where it went wrong was Brady did what he did thinking somehow along the line Smith was going to go along with it who actually went back and told Myra's sister who then phoned the police. And so next day he was arrested. So, so this the cl cleverly controlled murders that they had in the past with the burying of the bodies, making sure they've checked they're all still wearing the same stuff and there was no evidence left around, cleaning the van, all of that had gone. It was getting Edward's body out of that house you know as best they could wrapping him up and putting him out of the way did you ever ask her was. was was there more because if yeah no i did i said you know during the course of it i said were you involved in any more and um no she said i wasn't involved in any more could brady have been involved in any more did you Maybe. ever speak to him sorry did you ever speak no to i tried i i wrote to him on two or three occasions um, first occasion was just a hi, I'm Joe Chapman. You probably know I'm counselling Myra. It would be great to have a chat with you. Uh, I left it, nothing. Don't even know whether it got to him. The second one, I had a little bit more information. So I'd written to him saying, listen, uh, Myra's told me what's what's been, uh, what, what her part in it. It's, it's, it's unravelling. I'd like to get your side on it. 
I'm starting to see some of the things that you've alluded to. Uh, I'd like to chat to you about that. And here, by the way, is a, a, a letter in Myra, Myra's handwriting that she'd given me to give me authority to sort of speak to you, but she doesn't want to speak to you. Did she ever break down crying or anything, or was it just all, no Yeah, and the Leslie and the Leslie Ann Downey one she did, um, because that was that was t more to do with the fact that I think she'd started over the years she'd started to home into the person she used to be, and she used to be without doubt when you listen to people that knew her as a child, she was good with children, she was trusted. <laughs> 